Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shook. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, <laughs> sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. And then the hurt child became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. Y'all week been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel like, like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Okay. It's been a while since we talked. Uh, last time, it was good. We, we got to an exile and did some work there. Um, so do you have any... Any reports on that? Anything you want to share about how that went for you? Uh, yeah, I, the exile that we talked about, I think, was a, a little boy in a sandbox. That's right. Uh, you know, feeling scared, feeling alone, abandoned, um, just, just scared and alone. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I've spent my time, a lot of time, uh, bringing him with me everywhere I go. So, you know, I don't remember all the time, but uh, bring him with me to a ride, on a ride to like Lowe's or Home Depot or bring him with me grocery shop and, um, you know, bring him with me into the yard and, you know, mow the lawn with him like that. Yeah. Just, just like bringing him all over the place. And, mm -hmm. and I've got that, that spot. It's like, a, you know, if I, if I were to say pledge of the legions, it's like my, the palm, kind of touches the sternum and my hands go up over my, my left, uh, my left chest. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, you know, that's kind of like my, my connection to them. And, um, and every time I do it, it's, uh, it's really grounding. Like it's, and not, not like grounding as in, um, not feeling what I'm feeling, but it's connected. Right. You know? Yes. Yes. And, it's uh, great. The grounding is something that I've, I've definitely like quit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've quit. I've quit grounding, which was you know you trying to use like meditation and visualization and all that kind of stuff right. to not to not feel what I'm feeling. Right. Um, but I'm seeing I'm seeing that it kind of dissipates the moment that I make a connection with the part. Yeah. So, so yeah. way better than grounding. It's like it you know it, it kind of brings the system together rather than trying to ignore it or push it away or, or like, or mutes it or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've had the same experience and it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I, I, I got a story for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I resigned my job. I resigned oh. my job. Yeah. Um, I was having like a, I don't know. I was, I was fully blended with, uh, a panic, and uh and some kind of problem solver and i had this tunnel vision where i only saw positive benefits to resigning and i mm -hmm. did not see any i mean i knew the negatives i've i've had the same discussion with myself so many times 
But in this moment, at this moment, I somehow like fully blended in a, with a part that was just like, yes, this is the possible way. This is the only possible way. This is the mm-hmm. best way. This is what you got to do. You got to go for it. If you don't go for it, you'll never do it. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so I did, I, I wrote a resignation letter and I, I emailed it. Mm-hmm. And the moment I emailed it, oh, like a, all these other parts came rushing in wow. and, uh, and my gosh, was that a mistake? I mean, I spent every moment from then on just trying to keep myself from, from a panic attack, from a full blown panic attack. You know, trying to trying to push out the parts that were like, oh, this is a bad idea. And here are all here are all the cons and just repeat, like repeat to myself as if I'm I'm forcing blending with this one part that was like, nope, trust the process. Trust that this is the only way it's going to work. Be calm. Don't freak out, you know, and completely like pushing out every every other part. And that was, uh, you know, I, I ended up. (laughs) <laughs> rescinding my resignation, you know, almost immediately. I mean, it, I didn't oh, okay. sleep that wow. night. I, I sent it in uh, at like 11 o'clock in the morning, went yeah. all the way through the day on that, like right on the verge of a full blown panic attack, went to bed, could not sleep. I, I slept maybe an hour and a half that night between like anxiety dreams and then woke up in the morning and went in and, and rescinded my letter of resignation. Okay. And, uh, Kind of suck. It kind of sucked because then I had to expose my hand, which is that uh, I'm not always um, integrated. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, so it was like on a on a pretty institutional level to show uh, fragmentation. It was it was a tough one to do, but it yeah. kind of I don't know. There's a part of me. I read this book twice in one week. It's called Transcending Trauma. You ever heard of it? Uh huh. You recommended it to me. Oh yes, I did. I recommended it to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the the book itself is it's really clinical, and mm-hmm. so it's going through and it's describing like all personality disorders and and uh, you know remnants of trauma and all this stuff and how it deals with parts work and and so there a part of me latched on to borderline personality disorder. Okay. And so I pulled up the DSM five myself and. Mm-hmm. I read the thing. It's like 2000 and something pages. And I, I skipped the stuff that I, you know, it was like, now this doesn't apply to me. No, 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 no. Then I get to a thing and I'm like, okay, this one, it might. And then I go through it and I go through all the, the whole diagnostic mm-hmm. and I, you know, check what I know is valid and mm-hmm. then, uh, and then read about it and then move on to the next one. And at the end of it, I had compiled a list of like 18 disorders. Okay. Yeah. And and so there was a part of me that was like, oh, this is a, this, for some reason, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Like you got, well, you, yeah. you got your bulimia nervosa, you got mm-hmm. your borderline personality, you've got your anxiety uh, disorder, anxiety personality disorder, you've got like mm-hmm. anxious personality, whatever it is. There, there were, there's actual 18 of them and I don't need to rattle them off, but yeah. And then I was like, okay, well, what's the, what's the connection between all these things? And then um, they all fall basically under under one broad category of borderline personality disorder. Uh-huh. And so I was like, okay, this book's, book basically describes something that I'm going through. Then I, then I read it in the DSM and everything falls into this one category. And it's basically like, oh, okay, so I have borderline personality disorder. I'm going to have to bring this up with my therapist um, and see, you know, what, what does that mean when it comes to the direction of treatment? Mm-hmm. And I got stuck in that part. And I, I, there wasn't a different part telling me, saying, like, you know, just back off a little bit. Like, of course, you know, there, it looks like mom has borderline personality disorder as well. It looks like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and it's heritable. It's like five times more likely for someone to get it if, um, if a parent has it. So I was like, okay, yes. that, that makes sense. All this stuff makes sense. And it's, it, is, it is curable. It's not, it's not like... Uh, what is that? When, when it's uh, terminal, right. Uh-huh. And, uh, and so the only way to really get through it is, is through therapy. And there are a few different types of therapy that work really well. And, and so I went through this whole thing only to, to come back to parse work is definitely the best thing for me to be doing. Um, and, and every time I feel myself starting to like hyper-focus 
yeah. you know, become, become that version of myself that is, uh, obsessive compulsive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, a. I mean, it's almost like I can't see it. I just become it. You know, that's a blending that I, that I'm having a really difficult time when mm-hmm. I identify it. I'm in denial identifying it. I'm like, Oh, this is, this might be a little bit much. There's like a little voice in the way background. This might be a little bit much. Right. Um, but then the rest of my energy is like, no, this is it. This is, I got to do this. I got to go for this. Mm-hmm. So that's one story. Um, thank you for sharing that story. I have a lot of questions that I think, uh, I just want you to know that I don't, I don't have really any familiarity with borderline personality disorder and, and like, I don't, I haven't done research on that. So what you're telling me is kind of what I know about it. Um, just to let you know that. Okay, you said you have some questions. Um, did you talk to your Did you talk to your therapist about it? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you want to know what he said? Um, no, I mean, I wanted to know if, if you if you've already gone through that step of talking to your therapist about it. Yeah, yeah, I did, and I, I had I had unblended by the time I finally talked to him, which is a good thing, mm-hmm. you know, because I probably would have done a pretty good job of convincing him, you know of right. something or another. And I don't know what my agenda would have been at that point, but yeah, yeah, that's a really good point that, you know, they only know what we tell them and they have the stamp of diagnosis, you know, the, here's the diagnostic or the diagnosis, but if that's all based on what we give them, then, uh, yeah, we can, we can create or influence the diagnosis that way. I mean, it, I, there was nothing that was uh, elevated above my like my normal behavior. It is it is like my normal behavior. These these check marks. It's, there's nothing mm-hmm. there that that is a stretch for me. So right. it all made it all made sense. But at the same time, the diagnosis doesn't solve any problem whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and the even the like partial in, inpatient or total inpatient treatment centers that that deal with this kind of thing it's you know it's a little bit of like an ssri and Mm -hmm. a ton of therapy right and that's it you know so it's like okay well what good does this do me having you know if i if i do this if i go through with this and say no i I would like a diagnosis i'd like to do some some testing maybe see what happens and and have it be official that's on my health record and for what reason Right. right you know i'm like what's the end goal here and i had thought in this part that the end goal is to get the most appropriate treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, and so luckily that, that part was, was in control all the way through to the end where, where I realized, Oh, I'm in the, I'm in the best treatment. This is, this is the best thing. Like other than, you know, be going into full treatment, just, just, uh, inpatient like rehab. Um, and that the transcending trauma talks about how, um, that typically makes things worse. Typically makes things worse. Yeah. To go to inpatient, um, for borderline personality disorder, for, uh, for a lot of these, uh, personality disorders, Mm -hmm. um, because it removes the structure of normality. Right. And so things kind of like the structure is, is kind of what it, what holds it together. Yeah. um, Which makes a lot of sense for me. A lot of sense. So when you have, when you have the part that's kind of focusing on getting the diagnosis, is it, is it that part that, that finally says parts work is ideal or is it, is it like other parts that, that come in to, to help with that? Good question. So the way that I'm feeling it is that it's the part, but the part had to go through its own process and it w- it was resistant. It was yeah. resistant to reaching that conclusion. Yeah. Because it may, I think that it wants some better alternative, something that's going to work faster, something that's more right. more effective. You know, and it, so it's it's which like, makes oh, total sense. Yeah. I mean, that just makes here's, so much sense. Like getting a diagnosis, that's great, right? You know, you said like it feels good to to have that. Oh, here's here's my diagnosis from the DSM five. I mean, 
that's a good thing. If you have a problem, now you have a diagnosis. And, and yeah, getting through to the end of it and understanding the beginning to the end, I, I can see why that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I couldn't really think about anything else. Yeah. Because of this, because of this, this part that is, you know, obsessive compulsive. And it's just like, you gotta get, you gotta go, you gotta go, 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 you know, yeah. and then, oh, there's the, there's the solution. The solution is at the end of this train of thought. So work on it. Got to find out all of the information I can. And then it, yeah. it, I guess it was just resistant because it's a, it's like, oh shit. Like it, I, I thought maybe there would be something at the end of this, something more than what I'm already doing. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a very valuable part and the way that you're able to see it and say, you know, the the part had to go through its own process as opposed to I'm crazy or whatever, you know, whatever else, like normally w without the parts frame that we would be able to, that we would normally kind of fall into, like you already have that parts frame around it. Yeah. Sounds like sounds like it's working for you. It is. I'm, there was a a moment where it just like all of a sudden the parts work came in clear, but in a different way. And that was after I had gone back in and and rescinded my letter of resignation. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of that, I you know I got back to where I was where I was working on my outside project and I got there and and all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, oh my god, I. I was dissociated. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. So fully blending is also dissociating. Sure. It's yeah. dissociating from all the other parts. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm just focused on this one part. And sometimes that one part can just be a, the escapist, right? Other times the, right. the part can be a problem solver. Other times right. the part, part can be, you know, a rage, you know? Yeah. Yes. And yes, when, absolutely. when I go completely into one of those, boom, that's, that is dissociation. Dissociation is fully blending. There's no self there. And uh, I can't, I just, I was astonished that I wrote that letter. I went back and read it. Oh my God. It was uh, the most concise to the point, like yeah. holding the instant, the institution hostage. Like yeah. you need me, you yeah. need me and you need more of me. Uh, and I know this. And so I'm going to hold it against you as leverage. Mm -hmm. And you'll pay mm -hmm. me more if you, if you, if you want me back and I know you will because I'm really good at what I do mm -hmm. and, uh, and I have a track record and I have history here and I have rapport. And so you'll likely do what I want. Dude, I read that mm -hmm. thing and I was floored. Like where uh, the hell did that come from? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Right. I was yeah. writing like as a different person, as like cold blooded, you know, like a, like a, what you would picture a CEO yeah. would do just like, yep. Sure. Wash my hands of you. If you want me back, you'll give me more money. Yeah. And it's totally normal. I mean, who hasn't had an experience of going into whether it's rage or fear or something where we're just taken over and we look back and it's like, what, who was that? What, how did I do that? You know, it's totally normal. Yeah. As somebody who's who is so aware, not just aware of other people's perceptions, but but basically has the worst idea of other people's perceptions in mind at all times. So constantly walking a tightrope, then mm -hmm. to all of a sudden abandon all that and just turn into like this, just an asshole. It was just like a cold blooded asshole. They they had no idea this was coming. You know, they had no. They mm -hmm. were like, "Who the heck is this? No way. We did not know this was part of this person." Mm -hmm. Goodbye. <laughs> like, okay, fine. Like, if this is you, right. we'll struggle without you. You know, is that mm -hmm. bad? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so yeah, that 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 really made me realize there's like this. This is dissociation, and so I caught myself again uh, in the last week. Um, you know, with with betray betrayal trauma between my wife and I, her being the the betrayed partner, and she, you know, she falls into this really, really dark place very often. And it lasts anywhere from like three days to two weeks, mm -hmm. um, you know, where basically there's no trust. And not only is there no trust, it's like everything that could be the worst 
that the, the worst possible scenario is likely this scenario that we're in. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, you know, as a, as a, I guess, a borderline personality disorder, I completely assume the role of whatever is being described to me as me. And I assume right, the role okay. like, with, with wholeheartedly. So somebody says like, Matt, you are, you're amazing. Like, dude, you are, you're such a right. good basketball player. I'd right, be like, right. you know, I'll, I'll try to tell them like, well, listen, like, let's keep that at bay a little bit. Cause there are, there are definitely people that are better than me, but right, yeah, right. I'm, I'm definitely pretty good at what I do. Like that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Well, yeah. the same thing happens if somebody says like, you're, uh, you're such a piece of shit. You're not trustworthy. And, and then you're like, okay, wow. Well, yeah. Not just tr- untrustworthy, but like, you know, like evil, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there are parts of you that are so dark. And, and then I fall into this, like, I'm completely helpless, completely alone, unworthy that, you know, there's that kid in the sandbox. Mm-hmm. I'm abandoned. There, there's that giant black hole catching up to me as I'm running and, and I can't run anymore. And so I just fall in and, and I'm in, I'm somewhere else. And yeah. that is another dissociation. There's another part and it's, it's not the part that is the abandoned child because the abandoned child doesn't, isn't identified with, or doesn't identify as like an absolute piece of shit, like a slimy piece of shit. Right, 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 right. It identifies right. as a good kid, as a good kid, as a fully good person that is it's just awesome. completely mistreated. Yes, yes. And so there's this other part that I have not visualized yet. I can't figure out what it is, but it, it's the feeling of just a mucky shit quicksand, you know? Okay that uh that is that i am that I, it's not like it's not like how the black hole is like this thing that's outside of me uh-huh. and i might fall in it's like when i fall into that black hole then then i am slime like just the uh-huh. worst and it takes me days and i have to and the only way i see myself coming out of it and i recognize this pattern is if i'm starting to get evidence that there is positive uh perception of me somewhere somehow mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it has to be somewhere somehow coming from the person who has said you're a piece of shit so i have right. to wait for them to get out of their their right. place and then it takes me another two or three days after that to come out of where i am and then i'm still at this point where i feel like okay well that's really what they think about me and so I'm kind of, I'm right. kind of just pushing that part away, pushing that part away, trying to accept whatever positive emotions there are working on like building myself up with that. But there's never really a feeling of connection with the other individual because it, it's always like, okay, well, there, it's going to be a couple days this month. It's going to be a couple weeks this month. It's going to happen very mm-hmm. soon. And I'm not going to be able to trust that I'm in a good place. I'm not going to be able to trust that I'm a good person. I'm not going to be able to, so it's like that's the that's the borderline personality disorder. Then I'm using things to make myself feel better: alcohol, right. uh, you know, uh, tantalizing imagery, obviously, uh-huh. um, and, and and food are my main, uh-huh. you know, the the main go tos. And mm-hmm. so I decided nine days ago that I was going to do a year of a full, you know, full abstinence of drugs, alcohol, and, uh, my main, my main problem, which I, w- I went to treatment for, and then been in a 12 step program for, and, um, which is, which is uh, sex and love addiction. Okay. And so I, I have a connection with my addict. I have not profiled my addict, not filled in all the information about it. And, but I, I have a positive regard for the addict Mm -hmm. and I obviously have parts that are, that just like exhibit pure hatred or fear for the, uh, of the addict, Mm -hmm. um, the addict itself. I don't know if it's the addict, but there's just a a giant shame cycle, that, that horrible shame piece. Um, and I think that, you know, in the last nine days, I've just been, I guess it's just been a little bit more clear that I, I need to make 
a better connection with that, with the addict or whomever else is involved in that process. Because yeah. I still, at the end of the night, I'm like, okay, where, where are the cookies? Are they anywhere? Are there cookies right. in the house? Okay. Right. So I'm just going to have two cookies, you know? And then mm-hmm. even when I'm having the two cookies, I know like I ate enough food today. I don't need, right. I don't need these cookies. You know, I'm just doing it to get something. Yeah. 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 So that's the thing that I need to, you know, I need to focus on. Why, okay. when, when I, when I feel that boom, I need to get something. And all of a sudden I'm on the hunt and it's like, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a predator of whatever the hell that that is. And it's gotta be a, some kind of a dopamine high. Right. I'm a predator of dopamine. Uh, I got to figure out a way to, to be in self and not blend, not have my body taken over by that predatorial urge to get something. Yeah. Okay. What do you, what do you think? I, I feel I like you have, have, you have some similar parts. I have so many similar parts. I mean, I've, I mean, you've been you've been talking, and I've just been nodding and saying, "Yeah." I mean, I've been through so much of that, um, including including relationships like that, where you know, yeah, there's well, uh, similar, and um, yeah, all, all I can say is I'd love to help. I, I'm I'm excited and happy that your that your conclusion is is to do it with parts work and I'm here for you. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Well, I, yeah, I, I want to reemphasize, I guess that, um, that parts work is work on specifically the fragmented mind mm-hmm. and the fragmented mind is, is what, what we, what we're experiencing in dissociation and, uh, and everybody is on that that spectrum of fragmentation, and depending upon how you know what experiences you've gone through and how you've experienced those, right. uh, you know how how you've perceived those experiences, that's what puts you on the spectrum in your particular spot. Mm-hmm. And I did not until I started doing parts work. I did not realize really the extent of that dissociation, the extent of that fragmentation. I just always assumed, oh no, this is just me. Right. This is me. This is me right here. The just being me at all times. And I'm just in a mood or I'm in a phase or I'm in a whatever and not realizing that that no, like I I've I'm not even here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, parts work is the best work. You know, they like what well, DBT is another really good way to go about it. Um, EMDR, whatever, but but it looks like the best fit for for fragmented personality mm-hmm. issues is parts work. I'm a fan. Yeah. Well, would you like? Would you like to? Try some of that with uh, with one of these parts that you've mentioned. Well, there's a part of me <laughs> right now that uh, is 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 like projecting that there's an audience. Well, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, there doesn't have to be. I'm, there doesn't have to be. Uh, but I I just heard myself talk for a half an hour. And uh, it's, it's like, oh, don't, you know, don't be selfish. Uh, don't be so self-centered that you're going to now after talking for a half an hour, you're going to focus on yourself while, while you, you use the access of uh, James's energy and knowledge. It just, it, kinda, it just kind of feels, it feels a little bit fucked up because um, I guess I'm seeing an imbalance between what I get out of it and what you get out of it. And, and I know that, that that's likely not true, but I guess a part of me is telling me, you know, I'm selfish and, and you don't, you're not getting much out of, out of me and I'm getting a lot out of you. Yeah. Well, that part's welcome. I give that part a big hug and I'm, ha- I'm happy, I'm happy <laughs> to talk about that. If you want to talk about that. I mean, uh, and I really appreciate all that you shared. I mean, I, you know, 
so much of what I do is, um, you know, it's like you were saying, you've listened to a lot of these and, and you can predict what I'm going to say next kind of thing. And, um, it's really, it's really eye opening and, and helpful for me to, to hear more of a context, more of a story sometimes to know, uh, what people's journey is like outside of just, you know, me going down my, my checklist of, of questions. So I appreciate the context. Uh, I do too. I, I do too. I, I like hearing a, l- a lot of the stories behind the fragmentation. Mm-hmm. It makes, it makes a lot of sense to me. And so in listening to some of the, some of the episodes, uh, there, there isn't a lot of background and it kind of just goes, you know, kind of just goes right into right. the parts work. And right. and I can say, oh, I'm familiar with this type of part. I'm familiar with this, you know, this type of interaction or connection or lack of. Um, right. But when when I get somebody's story, it, it, it just connects so much mm-hmm. better. It mm-hmm. really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the part of you that's, you know, a concern about who's getting what out of this conversation. I mean, again, I'm happy to address that more if, if that part, if, if that feels right, if you want to talk about that. Um, no, no, there, uh, I think that the, the self, uh, feels that this is, this is mutually beneficial, mutually enjoyed, mutually, it just, it feels like, you know, we're, riding the same wavelength and then it's just the other parts that are coming in and saying you know basically tarnishing it i guess in whatever ways that they they do yeah yeah because you've said it you said it and what what is there not to trust about you saying uh that you get a lot out of it and that it's your favorite thing to do and that you love it and that you think you'll be doing it for the rest of your life. Like that, that's a Maybe. lot of evidence for me to go against and say, no, nope, yeah. I'm getting everything and he's getting nothing. Yeah. And I'm really good at not doing stuff. I don't like to do. Yeah. In fact, I can, I consider it one of my superpowers. It's, oh. it's like, I, I'm great at cutting and running, you know, if I'm not into yeah. something, I don't, I'm out. So yeah. Yeah. Unless, unless it's very much like one of these very recent podcasts I listened to. Um, and it's like the, the finances and you kind of just, I kind of keep putting stuff off just to be like, I, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. I can't handle this. So I'm not going to handle this until, until all of a sudden, boom, I'm extremely effective at making, you know, making it work in one day and then having like a sense of relief for a week and a half. Right, right. But then I spend another, you know, two and a half, three weeks letting shit pile up and and getting myself worked up. I'm really good mm-hmm. at also not doing what I need to do uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> if I don't like it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh-huh. again, we can take this anywhere you want to take it. There's zero pressure to, to do anything. There's zero pressure to publish anything. I, yeah, no, I enjoy, I'm, not, I'm not worried about I enjoy about that. chatting with you, so. I'm not worried about that. Well, I guess um, what I'd like to do is uh, is give give you the reins, whatever you want to do. What, like if anything, you know, in the past 39 minutes has sparked your interest uh, and you think that there's something that, you, that we could each or both benefit from, uh, get some information out of, mm-hmm. go down that road. Well, as far as parts... Um, I heard two big ones that, um, yeah, that I would, yeah, I I would want to focus on first or suggest focusing on first if you were going to work with those, work with parts. So, um, you talked about the addict and then you talked about the... (laughs) the monkey shit quicksand. Um, and I think they're both important to, to get to know. And I think one of our first conversations, we talked about the addict and because it's so powerful that maybe it would be important to, to work with first. 
um, because it is so hard to to have stability in other areas of our lives when we're kind of being run by the by addictive behaviors or whatever. Um, but yeah, when I, when you were naming those two, I was I was thinking is is the addict always this this kind of firefighter that comes after the uh the quicksand the being being the slime in the black hole no it's well it's well before mm-hmm. well before uh there's okay. so there's um there's a just an emptiness of like a void um that just always feels like it needs to be filled. And so that would be like, even at the end of the day, when I knew I've, I know I've I've eaten enough. I've enjoyed what I ate. I don't need to get anything more out of the day, but yet here I am looking for something else to put in there, something else to get. And I think that that's the, the idea is that it's to fill that, that feeling of emptiness and disconnect and, unworthiness all those those things that add up to a lack of connection yeah and you know that's why that's why each of all right man i'm sorry i'm here yeah so the ad, the addict is is basically like a lot like what they say in 12 step meetings where whenever you're working on your recovery, the addicts, you know, right behind you or back in the corner doing pushups, you know, waiting. And it kind of, it mm-hmm. kind of feels like that where it's not even like, maybe it's not doing pushups. It doesn't have to work very hard. Uh, but it, it's ready to fill the void just no matter yeah. what, just yeah. ready to jump in. And, and I, I, I'm not able to make a, a connection with that void that that's able to fill it or, or not have such a need. Right. And so, yeah, yeah. the addict, that the addict is there, man, ready to just yeah. blend. So I think, I think that would be my question is kind of, would it make sense for you? And again, we, if maybe we don't have time to do this today. We don't want to do this today, but I'm just trying to think about a roadmap. Would it make sense to, or does it feel like, right for you to um, get to know the addict or to focus on that unworthiness, emptiness part? Does that, you know? Uh, Well, you know, the the prescription is to work kind of like top down Mm -hmm. with, with the exile being at the bottom and and protectors being at the top and right. managers and whatnot. Um, right. And it's, it, I, it's funny that it goes this way. I booked this meeting meeting because I had said to myself, okay, I'm ready to, to work with the addict. Mm-hmm. And then since I booked this meeting, I've been thinking about, okay, I can't wait to get to, to work with this addict and meet this addict. I really would like to make some progress and make a, a deeper connection and, and, find ways which I can work with it and, and like, you know, make it feel better, satisfy that need for connection or whatever it Mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So I think that, I think you're right on track. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, if you want to, to try to go and, and do that now, we can, we can give it a shot. All right, let's go. Okay. Addict feeling. What's yeah. it like? What's it like in or around the body? Uh, it's a. It's not even a, a bad thing. It's like an anticipation of getting something good, like just an anticipation of not even. There's nothing else. It's just that one sensation of whatever good thing I got, whatever. Mm-hmm whatever something I captured, you know, it, it's such a, it is such like a predatorial feeling, but it's a, like a positive, like a hunt for, for something positive. It's very hard to describe. 
I've been hey, asked this question many well, times. You, oh, what, you say it's hard to describe. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt. But like, yeah, I know that you, you've you've done all this research. You've done your you've studied the DSM. Like, you know what dopamine is. And for me, I'm just like, like, yeah, that's. I'm sorry. I don't mean to like hijack it, but I'm just like, I, I'm I relate to it in that I think we all have that. I think we all have that that thing that motivates us to go get the thing that feels good. Right. And it turns us mm-hmm. into hunters. Even otherwise, though the, otherwise even we though, wouldn't bother. <laughs> yeah. Even though we know that, that whatever it is that we're, we're hunting for is that's the hungry, you know, the hungry ghost concept. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's a, that's my current depiction. You know, I, I, when I put the addict into my center app, uh-huh. And I said, okay, this is the next one I want to work on here. I uh, put it in and it's like, what does it look like? And I, I still think that that's the best description is that you're like so hungry, want to yeah. fill it. But the yeah. moment you put the food in your mouth, it, you're, you know, you're in an enormous pain. Mm-hmm. How do you that's feel it. towards it? How do you feel towards it right now? I, I from a, from self, man, I, I love this part. I absolutely love it. Okay. There's, a, I mean, the only issue here is that I'm, I'm unable to keep, you know, a connection with it that maintains moderation in like my internal diversity. <laughs> yes. Does it know that you love it? Yeah. Yep. Ask it, ask it how it feels about that. Oh, it says, let's go get something. The thing that it wants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It says, oh, you're, you like me? Well, me too. Let's go get something. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, I guess I would ask again, like, is it aware of your actual compassion for it? And, and does it have any meaning to it? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah, that first one wasn't really deep enough, man. I did. I wasn't relaxed. Yeah, that changed a lot. That's it, man. It went straight from let's get something to uh, we don't need anything. And that was the addict. So I, all I did was extend like true compassion, like make my proximity nothing. Just oh, I'm right here with you and I love you and I really appreciate everything you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden I felt, you know, I felt whole with it. Yeah. That's nice. And and what does it want to share with you? What else does it want to tell you now that it's in this space with you? I'm getting that this is all it wants. Mm-hmm. Like the reason that the addict 
takes over and pushes and does all this is because I'm not, I'm not present. Mm -hmm. And maybe at that moment, something else is running. The, the sprinters running the, the depression is there. It's taken over. It's the, whatever other managers, whatever OCD, anything at all. And it's just like, yeah. okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to get us to that good spot. Right. Okay. So that might even be a question that you ask of, of the addict part. It's kind of like, does it know, does it know what other parts are interfering With with your ability to connect with it, Does yeah, it it's, the, mm -hmm. it's that that sprinter is the toughest one, and mm -hmm. it's it's not even. It feels like the sprinter is is more than just one at this moment. You know, there's the. I remember the sprinter, and I connect with the sprinter as, like this, this constant have to be doing something to be something because if you're not doing right. something you are nothing right and so you always have to be doing something so that other people are okay with you who you are and they, and you're you're making who you are for them right that's that's that sprinter and then there's this other like there's my own i guess my own personal which is like when it comes to finances um I mean, money just stresses me the hell out sure you know, and when it comes to relational, uh, I don't know, tension, that stresses me out. And so these other parts, these uh, these other things that are stressing me out are making me feel like uh, I can't, I can't feel those things. I got to do something else other than that. Yeah. And the best way to do it is to, is to just vanish into whatever that good shit is. Makes sense. But then, you know, it comes back and all of that stuff looks worse. And yeah. it is worse. And then I've got other parts of me that are so upset. And the only way to get that to shut up is to go get some good stuff. Right. All right. So, again, being with the addict... Are you able to show appreciation for his, for its way of, of wanting to, or its intention? The, the visual that I am getting is that it looks just like me. It looks just like me, but it is missing like a large portion of its, of its chest. It's just like a black sphere of missing body. Mm -hmm. And it's just like filling it up filling it up with, with that, whatever that is that I'm, you know, being tempted by at that moment. Yeah. And, uh, that's my, that was my first visual visualization of the attic. So it's good that's that great. I can now have something to, to then work with. Yeah. You mentioned wanting, wanting to have that. Yeah. Yeah. It feels great to just, now I can, I'm here with them now. And how are you? How are you two being together? Uh, um, I'm just. It keeps coming that I'm hugging him. That I'm just mm -hmm. we're you know basically chest to chest. Even though he's got this big missing piece, I'm yeah. kind of just just filling it up with, you know, the love that I've got. Mm -hmm. And that's what I needed, man. That's exactly what I needed that little kid I can carry him around I can do all this stuff and 
could not figure out how to connect with the addict. That's good, man. That's so good. I got, I got to have my check in. <laughs> Whew, that one's been tough. Yeah. Okay, well, what needs to happen next? Check-ins. Connection, mm -hmm. maintain it, build it, work with it. It's such a big part of my life. That makes that really gives me something to something to feel good about doing, you know, something to fill that void with uh, is this connection. All right. That's that's the good stuff that is actually good. Hmm. Fuck yeah, man. I'm pumped. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's great. It's, I mean, I, I'm I'm hesitant to say anything. I feel like you're there and you're doing it, so I don't want to... No, if you want to go, if you want to do to, to anything, it's all right. I'm I'm here. I, I think that you know best, it, you know, when you're in your, when you're in self, so... So I would just keep deferring to you for what's next. And if you're, if you want to, if you have your next steps with this part and you, and you want to go do them, that's awesome. Well, it's, um, very clear what the, what, what it's doing, why it's doing it, the need it's trying to fill, what it says to me, what it, what it feels like inside very clear what it needs from me in order to stop doing that like crystal clear and um what it would rather be doing that's a little bit of a red flag though <laughs> I want to make sure that's not in it. I'll cut it. Yeah. Um, so what, yeah, what it, what it needs for me in order to stop doing this and what it wants to do instead, it's, they're the same thing. They're exactly the same. It wants to be that part of me that is making loving connection, not just comp like a compassionate, loving connection, uh, and not just outside of myself, but within myself. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. like a that's a huge key, man. That's that's a big piece. That's the biggest piece so far. Yeah. Does it have a burden? Ah, uh, I don't. I don't think it has a burden. Does it have other parts that it protects? Does it have? Does it have oh, an exile? Yeah. Sure, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there are burden parts that it, that it stands in front of, you know. Right. Uh, but the the very the very reason that it stands in front of those parts is to get this for that part. Because for that there exile. was because there wasn't connection there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. This this self has been exiled that's a that's a problem that's a problem you mean you mean th there hasn't been the connection there R yeah the, the connection Wait, between mm -hmm. me and it because right right it it feels like i'm not good at or felt like i wasn't good at m making those connections and feeling right that connection with and so, so I myself got pushed aside by a right. part. Yep. And so, said, yep. I can do this for you. I'll fill mm -hmm. this up for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Shit, James. I know, man. <laughs> well, congratulations. <laughs> oh, this is a good. This is a good feeling, man. It's like, uh, it's, it's. I guess it's like elation, you know. Uh, that's good stuff. Okay. I'm so happy to work on this. I'm happy for you. It's really, really awesome. Thanks for sharing it all with me. All right, I'll book with you again, man. I hope so. Peace. All right, bye. Do you want to help bring more self-energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Ivan, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube. And they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over. You can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links. They're right there. And give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.